Greg, just say it. It's okay. My wife and I, we just did this pre-bat mitzvah. We put everybody's name down and put what we expected them to put down. Absolutely. We did. We really did. And a lot of people came way under, by the way, way under. I should take my wife out of this. I did it on my own. I really did. And yes, I was trying to factor in, am I going to break even or make a little money on this? And I would have if some of the people came with the number I put down on that piece of paper. It's weird. With bat mitzvahs, there's weird amounts that Jewish people will give. You'll get like 18. I knew $18 checks, which is just pointless. I mean, why are you doing it anyway? An $18 check? Go away. You ate all my food and I get $18? Please. In a check, I got to go to the bank and deposit it? Jeez. I really am. I am tired of Michael Bennett and Earl Thomas and Richard Sherman, Russell Wilson and all these guys. When they win, we celebrate them. And when they lose, they act like a bunch of spoiled, entitled babies. I mean, Michael Bennett. And I like him and I like Richard Sherman. I do. They make our jobs easier because they are willing to say things and be honest. Just accept defeat. That's all. Stop being a baby. Every time you lose, pointing out that the Patriots have an easier path and you never played the game, reporter. It drives me crazy, Greg. I don't know about you, but I hate when the player tells the reporter, you never played the game, you can't tell me what to do. I mean, Jason Garrett really should be ashamed of himself, you know? I mean, Dak Prescott got this team. By the way, the Romo-JJ Watt trade is genius and no one's talked about it except for me off air. But what... He just said, being non-committal to Dak Prescott, who got them the one seed and home field advantage, by the way. And then after the season is over and he finally loses a game in which he played better than Aaron Rodgers, for him to come out and say we are non-committal on whether Dak Prescott is going to be next year's starting quarterback, that is ludicrous. Seriously, he should be ashamed of himself. And it's not his words. It's Jerry Jones's words. Jason Garrett should leave that team. If he wants to have his own voice, he needs to leave that team. I mean, just a total coward, Kevin Durant. Because listen, when you're a competitor, when you're playing sports, when you're a real competitor, and you lose to the Golden State Warriors in a series that you should have won, and quite frankly, they lost it because of Kevin Durant, you don't join the team that beat you. You stay with the guy, Russell Westbrook, who's been loyal, who you built a championship contender with. You stay with him, and you come back the next year, and you fight harder. That's what you do. You try to beat the team that beat you. That's what you do if you're Kevin Durant. You don't go to the team that beat you. You don't join the team that had the most wins in NBA history in the regular season. You don't join a team that went to the NBA Finals two years in a row, won one, and choked the second time around to the Cleveland Cavaliers up 3-1. You stay with Oklahoma City. You stay with Russell Westbrook. You stay with those guys. And you try to beat the guys that beat you. Jordan didn't join the Pistons, okay? He stayed with the Bulls and then beat the Pistons. And that's what you do if you're a real competitor. That's how you do it. I mean, this guy, Kevin Durant. Let me tell you something. When they win a championship, Golden State, and they will. Come on. No one's going to give Kevin Durant any credit. And if you do, you should be ashamed of yourself. I mean, the Baseball Hall of Fame should be ashamed of itself. I mean, it really should. They're making this up as they go along, and it's a complete joke. How about this? People who have a vote, all the people that have a vote, how about this? Vote for their on-the-field accomplishments, not anything that transpired in a locker room, in a locker room bathroom, in a locker room stall off the field. Vote for their on-the-field accomplishments. People are keeping Albert Bell out of the Hall of Fame because Albert Bell was mean to them at some point in his career. Get over it. Vote for their on-the-field accomplishments. And the fact that Jeff Bagwell, I mean Jeff Bagwell and Pudge Rodriguez are in the Hall of Fame before Barry Bonds, Mark McGuire, Sammy Sosa, Rafael Palmero, Roger Clemens is a complete joke. Just a joke. Jeff Idelson, fix it. I'll start taking your Hall of Fame seriously when you start take hall, you're taking your Hall of Fame seriously. You hear me, Idelson? This is seriously. I mean, these writers, get out of here. Who's the guy you mentioned earlier from New York who's 97 years old? 
Murray Chass. I mean, seriously, you shouldn't have a vote. Not today, not tomorrow, not three years from now, not three years ago. You should have never had a vote because you make it personal. You're going to punish Barry Bonds, Murray Chass, whatever your name is, if there was a pill that allowed you to be a better writer than you are, because you're not very good. I've never read any of your work, but if there was a pill that allowed you to be the best writer in the history of literature, you would have taken it. And you know what? If you took it and I had a vote for the Literature Hall of Fame, I would have voted you in, Murray. I don't care. 